Hey, what is up guys? And I know what you guys are thinking right now, like Wario's Fug, two videos in one day, no shot. But, yo, oh yeah, you already guessed it. We are in fact doing two videos in one day because today is technically my off day and I have nothing else better to do. So I went over to Group Recruiting Plaza today, was asking like, hey, you know, I'm doing some free coding. I need some tutorial ideas. And someone gave me a pretty interesting idea ideal to do. His name is Faley Pal. I don't know if I said that correctly, but he says that he wants to make a character color changer. All right, and saying this, and I was talking to him a little bit on Discord, he actually wants to make uh, the invincibility, hello computer, don't turn off on me, the invincibility star from Mario. All right, so this is going to include sound, this is going to include a size change as well. And so we're going to be learning quite a few concepts today for our coding. So for right now, I'm just going to kind of speed run this, and I know it's probably a bad habit that I should do, but I'm just going to make it so... Uh, that it's a quicker video instead of having to take your entire day trying to do this. All right, so the very first thing that we need is obviously our brick. This is supposed to be a mystery box, but uh, pretend that you have like a star that kind of pops up out of here. Uh, I'm just going to do a just a regular mystery box just for the heck of it. I'm going to go ahead and insert a script into that box. Now, very first thing I'm going to say is simply just say local brick is equal to script.parent. And then... That's basically all that we're going to be doing in terms of variables. I'm going to do brick.touched connect function hit. All right, so now what this basically does, if you looked at our old videos, that this is an event for when somebody touches our brick. So when someone touches our brick, pass through hit. What is hit? Hit is whatever touches the brick. And so therefore, that's going to be our head. So our head touches the brick. All right, and now one important thing that we need to do is that we need to say local humanoid is equal to hit.parent find first child humanoid now what this this will basically do is verify that the thing that the thing that it touches is a human all right and then what we're going to do is that we're going to say brick destroy so once it detects that we're a human we can go ahead and destroy the brick because that's essentially what we're going to be doing all right now there's a, oh that brick is really high up but i could still touch it and as you can see when i touch the brick it disappears now the first thing that we're going to focus in on is our body color changing, okay? So I'm going to say, uh, so very first thing that we need to do is think for the future here, okay? And what we basically need to do is we need to, um, we need to declare our body colors, okay? And to do this, all we say is local body colors is equal to hit.parent find first child body dot dot space dot dot colors so it's going to look for something that's called body colors there's an easier way to find it but that's probably the best way now we need to keep a storage of our body colors okay so we need so at the end of when the script ends we need to make sure that when the script ends they don't end up as like a purple body they need to end up as a um they need to end up as back as their regular character so a ridge left arm is equal to body colors dot uh, left arm color three or something like that. Left arm color three local a ridge right arm is equal to body colors dot right arm color three. So basically we're taking down a storage of what our original body colors were. Body colors dot right. No, lo, whoa, original left left. No, original left leg is equal to body colors dot left leg color three local ridge right leg is equal to body colors dot right leg co oh i can't even spell light right leg color three and local ridge torso is equal to body colors dot torso color three so what that'll basically do is that it'll keep a collection of what what our skin color was prior to running the code all right, and now this is where we get into the good stuff. Now, what we need to do is that we need, we're going to run a function, okay? So I'm going to put change color, and we're going to pass through body colors, okay? Now, it's it's saying, like, hey, you don't have a function name change color. Well, I know that. We need to make one. So I'm going to say local function change color body colors, okay? So we're basically taking our body colors, and then we're putting them into this function, okay? We're taking this information and passing it into here because now we need to change the colors. The very first thing that I'm going to do is that we're going to make it a random color, all right? So we're going to start off with local random color, 
is equal to color three dot from RGB math dot random zero to two fifty five math dot random zero to two fifty five and math dot random to zero to two hundred and fifty five. Now what this basically does here is that this says, hey, I want you to pick a random color from the RGB spectrum starting with R. So red, how red do we want it to be? Well, it's going to be 0 to 255. So any number between 0 and 255. How green do you want it to be? Well, anywhere between 0 and 255. And how blue do you want it to be? Well, anywhere between 0 and 255. So for example, what it really changes is this. So it starts off as white. And now let's pick a random number, 176. Let's pick a random number, 5. And let's pick a random number, 89. And that's our random color. It's like this rear, it's like this weird purplish whatever color. All right, so that's going to be our random color, and it's going to do it multiple times. So we're going to be doing that in the future. But for now, let me just do the the, uh, the tedious work by just simply changing each and every single one of our body parts to that random color. Now we're going to say body colors dot left arm color three is equal to random color. Body colors dot right leg color three is equal to random color. Body colors dot right. No, I already have right on dot torso color three equals a random color. And I have a lowercase c there that needs to be uppercase. And I'm missing one. I have right arm, left arm, right leg, need left leg. So body colors dot left leg. Left leg color three is equal to random color. So this changes all of these to this specifically randomly picked color. So our, re our weird random purple color that we have is actually going to change all of our body colors. All right, and then finally what we need to do is that we need to do this multiple times. So I'm gonna say for i is equal to zero, 75 do. So it's gonna change our color 75 times and I'm gonna say wait 0.1 because we want people to actually register that their body is being changed, meaning that we need to give time for them to register like, okay, my body's now purple. Okay, my body's now blue. If I made this an insanely small number, they're going to be like, all right, well, that script went really quickly and I can't even see what color I changed to. We don't want that. And now technically, this is one way to do it. And we should actually be done with our first part of the script. And now what this will do, what this should do, I should say, is that when we touch the brick, it'll change the color randomly. And here we go. It now changes our color 75 times. Here we go, it's gonna keep going. But now here's the problem. This is why that we needed our original color because we ended at lime green. We don't want that. We want it so that after this script runs, we make it so that our body colors are our original. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this part of the code that we made up here, and I'm going to put it underneath here. And instead of random color, we're instead going to compare two and two. So origin, so body colors, a head color equals original head, original right arm. And then for left arm, it's obviously going to be a ridge left arm. And then for this one, it's going to be a ridge, it's going to be a ridge right leg. For this one, it's going to be a ridge torso. And for this one, it's going to be a ridge left leg. All right, so I'm pretty sure I have all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. So let's go ahead and let's try it again. And then there's two more steps. We're going to make our character a little bit bigger. And we're going to add sound to it. Okay. So now when I touch it, do, 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 do. And I change the colors and all that good stuff. And then once the script ends, we go back to our original body color. All right, so just like that. And now what we need to do is that let's go ahead and let's add our sound. Now note, because we're destroying this brick, we cannot put a sound in here. Otherwise it won't register. We need to put a sound inside of workspace. I'm gonna rename it to sound. All right, now what we need to do is let me go ahead and let me find the, uh, let me find the sound that we had here. We we're gonna use this one. All right, I'm just simply going to copy this. And I'm going to throw in the ID in the properties of sound. And as you can see, we're going to be doing that one. All right. And so now that it works, we have the volume at one. We're simply just going to now write local sound is equal to game.workspace.sound. We could change it to star if we want, but we're just going to keep it as that. So we want our sound to play before the block is destroyed. 
Well, actually, it doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to play it before. And then at the end of the script, we're just going to say sound, stop. All right, so now that we played the sound, all right, just to prove it to you, in fact, let me go ahead and let me try it out. All right, so we basically made it so when we touch the brick, the sound plays. Once we go back to the original body color, the sound stops. And there we go. The sound stops as soon as we go back to our original body color. All right, and finally what we need to do, let's make it so that we are a little bit bigger. All right, so just like the color ones, we need our original body scale. Local original body scale is equal to humanoid dot body type scale dot value. All right, so we get our value. Then down here, I'm going to say, um, I don't even know what I'm going to say down here. I'm just going to say humanoid find first child body type scale dot value is equal to original body scale, I think. And then I probably should have done the same for up here. Now I'm thinking about it. Humanoid original body scale. Yeah, I think that's okay. But let's go ahead and now let's change the scale of our, um, let's go ahead and just change the scale. We're going to say humanoid, find first child, body type scale, dot value is equal to 1.15. All right, and we could change this to however we want. We can make ourselves humongous if we wanted to, but for now, among goose, sorry. I said humongous, but it sounds like among us, so I get, just had a chance to be funny. I appeal to my four-year-old among us fans out there. All right, but anyway, now this should be our finished script. So overall, it should make us bigger. It should return us back to our original height once the script ends. We have the color changing. We have the sound. Let's go ahead and let's test it out officially. Here we go. Let's see what's up. As you can see, we are bigger. And as you can see, once the script ends, we go back to being small and at all the scripts stop, the color changing stops and our size goes back to normal and the sound stops. All right. Thank you guys for watching. That's how you make your invincibility star. If you wanted it so that your health is infinite, you would simply just say humanoid.health or I'm sorry, dot mex health equals INF. No, INF humanoid.health equals INF or something like that. I'm not sure. Maybe INF is a number. I'm not sure. Uh, just to be safe, I would do max health is equal to that. Humanoid.health is equal to, you know, whatever the heck that number is that I told you. You know, just to be safe. And then down here, you would say humanoid.max health is equal to 100. Humanoid.health. Well, you don't even need to change this, but just in case, humanoid that health equals 100. All right, and so that's how you do it. All right, guys, thank you all for watching. If you guys have any other scripting ideas, feel free to say it in the comments. It's been a real, it's been a real pleasure teaching you guys over the past couple weeks, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this. All right, see you guys soon. Bye bye.